Hey, welcome back to the Fortified Castle. A fascinating video for you today. We're going to be talking about the Whittler. That's a lot of people's favorite pattern. Really cool pattern. Uh, started out as a, a small knife, ended up getting bigger and bigger. Um, today they make some pretty big ones. But uh, this is going to be my open tag. Show me your Whittlers, guys. If you got a Whittler, uh, go ahead, throw it out there. Let's see them. But uh, I'm not only going to show you my Whittlers, I'm going to talk a little bit about the pattern, the history, um, what is a Whittler, what is not a Whittler, and um, just take you through. Uh, I have a lot of different examples of Whittlers, some of them rare. So uh, I hope that you stay tuned and check out the whole video. Um, we'll see you in a minute. Okay, welcome back to the Fortified Castle. Hi to all my viewers. Bonjour, privet, guten tag, hola, ciao, konnichiwa, and good day, mate, to my friends in Australia. And uh, today, we're going to be checking out the uh, Whittler pattern. And uh, so, uh, for those of you who don't know, a uh, Whittler is a specific type of pattern that... that uh, 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 we call collectors have named a whittler. It doesn't mean this knife was meant to um, uh, uh, use in whittling. They started out as three bladed pen knives. They weren't called whittlers. They were just called three bladed pen knives. So there are some uh, defining factors of a whittler. <clears throat> they come in uh, 13 different patterns uh, that are recognized, but the uh, the uh, a whittler has a main blade at one end and has two equal size blades at the other end. So on this example here, they're not exactly equal, but this is an older knife and one side has been worn down. The other defining feature of a Whittler, so it's not that it has three blades. Stockmans have three blades. Uh, carpenter knives have three blades. But the Whittler has two of the same size blades. Now, this is not defined by size. So they could be really big, <clears throat> but as long as they're the same size and it has one main blade at the opposite end, then it's a Whittler. That's a basic definition of a Whittler. Also, whittlers are uh, split back, and so there are two spring knives, and the main blade operates off of two springs. On the other side of the knife, each blade operates off its own spring. Most whittlers have a divider that come down and split them, and you can see how this um, back spring narrows down in size to the bottom. Down here, right about here, where, where is it? Right about here, right around where the shield is, the divider ends and there's nothing here. The springs are just running against uh, their self. And this is called a split back whittler. It's not necessary to make a whittler that way. It's just the way most of them uh, were made. Nowadays, you can find them uh, without the split back on them, but all the ones in the ancient antiquity were um, split back whittlers. So, Levin says that whittlers run between uh, two inches and four inches, and um, that's pretty much the size difference on these. I, I have uh, found whittlers in... Um, Catalogs going back to 1860. I think they probably go back at least another 20 years to 1840, maybe even longer. This is 
a picture of what looks like to be a whittler. It's a French knife from uh, Art de Courier. This manuscript was produced in 1771. However, um, the knives pictured here could be much, much uh, earlier. But you can see there's a main blade there and a um, two of the same size uh, blades at the opposite end. And Levin uh, says this was probably the precursor to the uh, Whittler pattern that we, that you see came out of England quite a bit. So uh, Whittlers, because of what I just showed you, uh, the complex manufacture of these knives, you see the uh, nickel silver divider here and it ends. The back springs are tapered just as a blade would be tapered down to one end. And getting all these blades to fit properly um, was always a premium knife. So, um, matter of fact, uh, a Whittler Remington's um, pearl handled Whittler that was three inches uh, was eight dollars. It's large trapper, which was an overpriced knife. It sold for three twenty-five. Um, the Whittler was was um, three times, three and a half times the price of the uh, trapper um, because they're just difficult to make and they take a lot of handwork. And so they're all always considered premium knives. Now I differ with Levin on that. Up until 1970, I'd say they were premium knives. After that, you see a lot of whittlers that, that just haven't had a lot of uh, work put into them. And I definitely wouldn't consider them to be premium knives. <clears throat> so whittlers were always uh, small pattern pin knives is what they were. But they made them in bigger sizes, both in antiquity and today. This is a really large um, case seahorse which is a um, Warren Cliff uh, Whittler clearly pretty nice knife this knife is pretty big let me measure it here it's three and three quarter inches long this is the 804 pattern of trade made between 1954 and I think the early 80s is when they discontinued this this is a large knife, um, not only lengthwise, but in girth. So it's three and three quarter inches, but you can see it's, it's a really uh, wide, thick handled knife. And this knife was uh, sold by Schrade as a carpenter's knife. And so um, the division there is larger whittlers were considered carpenter knives. Uh, even though they were just exactly like the pen knives. <clears throat> but <clears throat> what definitely isn't a whittler is this knife right here. And so this is a very popular model, Camillus. It's a uh, 72 pattern. And um, when you look at this, it has three blades too. Sometimes you'll see these listed as whittlers. You'll notice that the two blades are equal size, but one's over here and one's over here. And so remember, a whittler has a main blade at one end and the other blades are at the other end. So this is a carpenter's knife right here. And that's what most of them were marketed as. That's what this one was marketed as, as a carpenter's knife. So that's what a whittler isn't. And we looked at what a whittler is already. So let's go ahead and um, go through these patterns and look at these really cool knives. So out of the 13 different recognized patterns of these whittlers, I have uh, seven of them, seven of those patterns. So the first one is a regular serpentine pattern. So if you look at this, it looks like a stockman, but actually it's a whittler. And this is a New York Knife and Company uh, Whittler here. Probably dates to the uh, early uh, part of the 19th century. 19, up to 1920 probably. This is a Walden. This is a uh, Swell Center Balloon in Whittler. These are considered uh, common 
both of those. This is probably the same date as the... Uh, this is a really nice knife. Notice the nickel silver liners, the nickel silver divider in it. Really, really nice knife. Um, here's another one. This is a modern interpretation of a swell center balloon in with a uh, matchstick uh, nail nicks, worked blades, and worked bolsters. And worked back. This is a St Stuart Taylor design uh, marked on Uncle Henry. This is a um, a uh, serpentine pattern. It's a Warren Cliff, but it doesn't have a Warren Cliff blade. A lot of them have this uh, Warren Cliff pattern without the Warren Cliff blade on them. But this is an E Wick. Dates to the 1950s of this knife right here. Here's a smaller one. Same thing, Warren Cliff pattern, but not a Warren Cliff blade on this knife. You see right there. And um, this is nice Coca Bola scales on here. Really good looking knife. No divider you'll notice on this knife. But it's a traditional split back pattern. Here's another Warren Cliff pattern, Cases uh, Seahorse, and it does have a Warren Cliff blade on it. No divider on this. This is a Schrade um, 821. This pattern was made one year, 1953 to 1954. The pattern in the knife is rare, but it's not a rare pattern for uh, split back whittlers, as you, we've already seen a number of them. If you wonder uh, who made this E Wick knife, they're exactly alike, except for the scales. So Schrade probably made this knife right here. Um, this is the 804 pattern. It is a Whittler pattern, but um, sold and marketed as a um, carpenter's knife. Really robust. Nice little coping blade there. This is a beautiful uh, example on Mother of Pearl. And um, it has uh, work liners on it, if you can see that right there. The divider has worked on this. Really nice, fine knife by E.C. Simmons. Notice that one of these blades is a, a cuticle blade. So um, collectors don't consider these whittlers. Not all collectors, but it's probably evenly split. You know, half the collectors consider this a whittler and, and half don't because it's a cuticle blade. And um, that's kind of collector thinking. But uh, when I look back into history, into the 1800s, when these things first came out, there's an amazing uh, blade array that were put on these, these little three-bladed knives. Um, manufacturers never made the distinction uh, um, as these being different because they had hygiene blades on them. So I don't either. And I consider this a whittler. This is another serpentine one. This is a shadow knife, meaning the tangs are hidden. And so very easy and pocketable in horn. Really, this is a larger one. A really nice uh, example of an early um, three-bladed whittler. This is another uh, beautiful example of a whittler. A very unusual one. Never seen one like it before. So it actually has a, um, a worn cliff type serpentine pattern. But you'll notice on the... Um, 
on a Warncliffe pattern, the serpentine pattern comes in here and curves back out this way, like a, uh, not like a dog leg, a dog leg goes the other way. So it, it curves this way like a uh, stockman, but if you'll notice on this one, it curves, but it's curving uh, the opposite way. It's coming this way. It's very slight, but if you look at it closely, you can notice which way that curve is going. It doesn't come back this way right here. And um, it has a hump, a center, or a, uh, it's a swell center. And um, that is, uh, it looks a lot like a small um, Warncliffe pattern. Or not worn clip like a Norfolk pattern, which is a very rare pattern, and I think that's what this is. But it it could just be a very odd serpentine pattern too, so I don't know. But it kind of looks like a Norfolk pattern. A Norfolk pattern had a specific blade, had a very abrupt clip on it that kind of looked like a harpoon. It came up and then came down, uh, uh, really quick. Let me show you that real quick. All right, so uh, kind of like a um, Warncliffe pattern, but it curves out the other way, has a hump in the middle, and then it had this really weird clip. Um, that's no other clip looks like that. Kind of looks like a, a harpoon in a way, the way it goes up, and then a really quick drop Norfolk pattern. So that's what I think that Robeson is, but, um, you know, it may just be kind of weird and just kind of look that way. But this is a really uh, remarkable knife, two and three quarter inches. It has a, um, a button hook on it, which is unusual. And then everything is polished on this thing. Look, look at the, uh, see the mirror polish on that? On the ends of the back springs there. Everything is polished. When you look down into it, mirror polish. Here's an, another uh, really unusual pattern. This is called an orange, orange blossom pattern by collectors. It's a, actually a combination of patterns. And so it is basically a... Um, so uh, it's a lobster pattern. And so you, you have a... Um, a cuticle blade on the back and the back spring is not a back spring it goes down the center uh, so that you can work blades from any side in any angle but the top of it is actually a whittler pattern and so the spring is down there you can see how thick the blade is and it works off of both back springs and then the uh, small blades work off of a single spring. It's hard to see, but you can see there's single springs right there. So it's also a gunstock pattern. And so these are just really bizarre patterns of, of knives. This thing is just incredible. Uh, you have work liners. Uh, look at how mirror polished. I haven't touched this knife other than wipe it down. So this is all... Uh, original mirror polish on this knife and every piece of metal on this knife is mirror polished everywhere you look also the milling is uh, front and back which a lot of uh, knives were only you know one-sided when they milled them but even if you look down in here look at the mirror polish on that on the ends of the back springs there just absolutely incredible Look at that. Fantastic knife. The orange, orange blossom pattern was the most ex expensive uh, pattern of knife that you could get. The only one that would be more expensive if you were getting a Bowie that had gold, silver, and pearls on it, something like that. That could be more expensive. But for an average knife, um, a manufactured knife, um, this was the most expensive knife that you could get in the 1920s. This is a um, equal end pattern. These are really common, uh, as common as the uh, Warren Cliff or Sleeveboard patterns, which were the most common. 
right here. Beautiful knife, a little tiny. You can see the um, back spring there. And then this is this knife dates pre 1890. Pretty cool. Genuine tortoise shell. That's a uh, Westing home. Here's another equal in pattern right here. Um, I think this is a white and sons. Let's see. Krauss. This is a Krauss, a German knife right here. Another really nice knife though. A lot of mirror polish on it. Mother of Pearl. Um, this is a German knife, a really obscure company. I can't find any information on it other than it was a German company. And it was a um, 1800 knife. Pretty unusual blade design on that. That stock on there. And then it just goes down to nothing. And uh, both both the uh, back blades are broken, but I just got it because it's such an old, unusual knife. Really cool. This is one of the rarest patterns. It's a uh, Anglo-Saxon or cigar-shaped pattern uh, knife. And this is a Robinson. Pretty knife. Very rare pattern. This is another rare pattern. The uh, Congress. Um, and it was made by a novelty cutlery company. They mainly did um, those risque clear pitcher knives. But here's one in a nice Coca Bola. Look at that. Really nice. These Congress patterns are rare though. And this is sleeve ward pattern from GEC. Um, I think it's around three and a half inches, maybe three and five eighths. Yeah, three and a half. Beautiful little sleeve board uh, whittler. Here's another sleeve board right here. And that's a W.H. Morley and Sons. Really nice knife here, too. Well-made German knife. One of the best German knives I've ever seen. All right. So that's a look at the um, your uh, sleeve board or your um, whittler pattern. Uh, when they get bigger, sometimes they're considered carpenter knives. They're still whittlers, though, unless um, the blades are split up. If if you get two of the same size blades on this end, and it's a split back, it's a whittler. Um, 13 different patterns. Some of them are rare. I showed you a few of those. The other rare ones are the jumbo, so that's a really big... Uh, they were usually a uh, sleeve board design like this. They're just huge. They're like four inches. They're like this thick, really, really big knives. Those are really rare. The um, oval ones are rare. The Congress one is rare. And the Norfolk one is rare. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it informative. And I'd love to see yours.